Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get out your King James Bible. We're going to continue the commentary series. This will be on Jeremiah chapter 46. Jeremiah 46 and verse 1. The word of the Lord, which came to Jeremiah the prophet, against the Gentiles. Now, the word Gentiles in the Old Testament, well, in the New Testament, sometimes the translators used Gentiles. Other times, they took the same word and translated it as nations instead of Gentiles. But Gentiles and nations is the same word. They just kind of used them interchangeably. And when you listen to modern day so-called theologians, they'll tell you, oh, well, Gentile, that means non-Jew. That's not what it means. I mean, sometimes when it was talking about the nations of Israel, it was the same word that they translated as sometimes as Gentiles. So when they're talking about the nations of Israel, are they talking about non-Jews? Well, actually, Judah was only one tribe out of 12. So maybe, maybe they are talking about the non-Jews. And yeah, the lost tribes of Israel are only lost to modern denominational churches. You want to know where the lost tribes of Israel are? Read Jeremiah, uh, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29. So, Jeremiah 46, verse 1. The word of the Lord which came to Jeremiah the prophet against the Gentiles, against Egypt, against the army of Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, which was by the river Euphrates, our Carchemish, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, smote in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Order ye the buckler and shield, draw near to battle. Harness the horses and get up, ye horsemen, and stand forth with your helmets. Furbish the spears and put on the brigandines. Therefore have I seen them dismayed and turn away back, and their mighty ones are beaten down on her fled apace, and looked not back, for fear was round about, saith the Lord. Let not the swift flee away, nor the mighty man escape. They shall stumble and fall toward the north by the river Euphrates. Who is this that cometh up as a flood, whose waters are moved as the rivers? Egypt riseth up like a flood, and his waters are moved like the rivers. And he saith, I will go up and will cover the earth. I will destroy the city and the inhabitants thereof. Come up, ye horses, and rage, ye chariots, and let the mighty men come forth. The Ethiopians and the Libyans that handle the shield, and the Lydians that handle and bed, bend the bow. Uh, let's take a quick look at a couple other verses about Ethiopia and Libya. Second Chronicles 14.12 So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah. Asa was king of Judah. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. Uh, so are these Ethiopians black? So how can Judah... And all you know, all these black Hebrews uh, be Judah when Judah smote the Ethiopians. Does that make any sense to you? 
If it does, please explain to me because it don't make no sense to me. Second Chronicles 14, 12. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah and the Ethiopians fled. Zephaniah 2.12 Z-E-P-H-A-N-I-A-H Ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my sword. Ezekiel 30 and verse 5 I remember we were talking about Ethiopia and Lydia and Libya. Ethiopia and Libya and Lydia and all the Mingled people. Mingled with what? Probably the Canaanites. Who knows? Lord knows. I don't. But all the mingled people. Ethiopia and Libya and Lydia and all the mingled people and Chub and all the men of the land that is in league shall fall with them by the sword. I don't think the Lord likes these people. What do you what do you what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Did you know that Egypt is called the land of Ham? Now remember Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. Remember Noah cursed Canaan? And the Lord didn't like the Canaanites, his children, the Canaanites' children, that is. Uh, can you prove that, Chaplain Bob? I don't believe you. Okay. Uh, go to Psalms 105, verse 23. Israel also came into Egypt. Remember, Israel went to Egypt, right? And Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Now, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Psalms 105, 27. Let's skip down a few. They showed his signs among them, and wonders in the land of Ham. Well, it's talking about Pharaoh's armies and, oh, you know, all the plagues of Egypt. Psalms 106, 22. Wondrous works in the land of Ham and terrible things by the Red Sea. Well, what happened in the land of Ham? God did the plagues of Egypt with Moses, right? And terrible things by the Red Sea. What happened? The Red Sea. Uh, Pharaoh's army drowned, remember? Yeah. But if you want to read... Psalms 105, you can, uh, you'll get, you'll find out that that is exactly what we're talking about. All right, Jeremiah 46, verse 9. Come up, ye horses in rage, ye chariots, and let the mighty men come forth, the Ethiopians and the Libyans that handle the shield, and the Lydians that handle and bend the bow. Now remember, God doesn't like doesn't sound to me like God likes the Ethiopians and Libyans. Doesn't sound like it from what the other things we read. Verse 10. For this is the day of the Lord of hosts, a day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries, and the sword shall devour, and it shall be satiate, made drunk with their blood. For the Lord God of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Go up into Gilead and take balm, O virgin, the daughter of Egypt. In vain shalt thou use many medicines, for thou shalt not be cured. The nations, well, there you go. Uh, nations. This is the word they use for Gentiles. Same word. The nations have heard of thy shame, and thy cry hath filled the land. For the mighty man hath stumbled against the mighty, and they are fallen both together. The word that the Lord spake to Jeremiah the prophet, how Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, should come and smite 
the land of Egypt. Declare ye in Egypt, and publish in Migdal, and publish in Noph and Tophanes. Say ye, stand fast and prepare thee, for the sword shall devour round about thee. Why are thy valiant men swept away? They stood not, because the Lord did drive them. He made many to fall, yea, one fell upon another, and they said, Arise, let us go again to our people and to the land of our nat nativity from the opposing sword. They did cry there, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is but a noise. He hath passed the time appointed. Have you ever heard the saying, that dog's bark is worse than his bite? You know, an old toothless dog. All he is is noise, barking, bark, bark, bark. He hath passed the time appointed. In other words, his time's passed. You know, his time's over. Verse 18. As I live, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts, surely as Tabor is among the mountains, and as Carmel by the sea, so shall he come. O thou daughter dwelling in Egypt, furnish thyself to go into captivity, for Noph shall be waste and desolate without an inhabitant. Egypt is like a very fair heifer, but destruction cometh, it cometh out of the north. Verse 21. Also her hired men are in the midst of her are in the midst of her like fatted bullocks, for they also are turned back and are fled away together. They did not stand, because the day of their calamity was come upon them, and the time of their visitation. The voice thereof shall go like a serpent, for they shall march with an army, and come against her with axes as hewers of wood. They shall cut down her forest. Now, I believe that's a metaphor for her army being like, you know, family trees, maybe. I don't know. Like the, you know, they're going to cut the men down like trees in a forest. They shall cut down her forest, saith the Lord, though it cannot be searched, because they are more than the grasshoppers and are innumerable. The daughter of Egypt shall be confounded. She shall be delivered into the hand of the people of the north. The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saith, Behold, I will punish the multitude of no. Huh, that's a funny name for a city, huh? No. Hey, uh, will you tell me what city you live in? No. Oh, come on. Tell me the name of the city you live in. No. Oh, come on. It's, is it really a big secret? What's the name of your city you live in? No. Sounds like a comedy skit, right? Except for I'm not very good at comedy, so... Behold, I will punish the multitude of Noah and Pharaoh in Egypt with all uh, with their gods, their satanic false gods, and their kings, even Pharaoh, and all them that trust in him. And I will deliver them into the hand of those that seek their lives, and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of his servants, and afterward it shall be inhabited as in the days of old, saith the Lord. But fear, but fear not thou, O my servant Jacob, and be not dismayed, O Israel, for behold, I will save thee from afar off, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and be in rest, 
and at ease, and none shall make him afraid. Fear thou not, O Jacob, my servant, saith the Lord, for I am with thee. For I will make a full end of all the nations whither I have driven thee. But I will not make a full end of thee. So the Lord's going to make a full end of all nations whither he has driven them. But I will not make a full end of thee, but correct thee in measure. Yet will I not leave thee wholly unpunished. So, there's a spanking, there's a correction coming, but not a complete end. So there is hope and a light at the end of the tunnel. In the Lord's eyes, anyways. As far as the New World Order is concerned, uh, the light at the, end of the, at the end of the tunnel is an oncoming freight train. And we're about to collide. Because... Our people have forgotten the Lord, and punishment is coming. You know, the more I read this, the more I think about Revelation and the plagues of Egypt, and more and more it looks, <laughs> it makes sense to me. But uh, very, very few people teach this kind of stuff. So it don't fill the pews. And the more people you got in the pews, the heavier that collection plate is when you pass it around, you know. Teach us lies. Tell us the things we want to hear. Praise the Jesus. Yeah. All right. Well, all blessings, praise Glory and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.